Hi, uh, Music Bear here. Um, I'm going to show you something about how to create um, several oscillators in um, Synet SuperFX or Syn, as I like to call it. Um, and I'm um, going to just jump right in. We have an instance of Syn on the board, and we're going to push the show um, the graphic user interface. I'll do that, and it looks like this. So, the user interface for the advanced, the advanced um, uh, setting looks like this. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to push the instrument. And when we do that, we get this. We open and then we're going to look at the add sin. We have three sins, but we're not going to look at those now. We look at the add sin and we go into the edit knob. Now it looks like this. This is actually something that could be um, uh, well, it's, it's it's the same as in the uh, in LFO um, on the normal uh, LMS uh, user interface. It just has a little bit more knobs. In this case, we're not going to look at it. Uh, we're going to lose the show voice parameters. That looks like this. And this is actually where we're going to work. Because a voice is an oscillator. And we can see we have oscillator 1 open here. And we can see that the shape of the oscillator is a simple sinus curve. This we're going to change. And because we're going to change it, we're going to press the a little bit too small. Dumb. Um, we're going to push the change button. And that brings us up to this screen. This screen actually shows how the um, uh, the, um, the nature of the wave um, and it, it, in, in fact this is a wave uh, distortion table. It is. Ha it actually happens to be so that with this you can make any wave, any wave at all. If we, in the mathematical uh, calculation, uh, we can create um, a saw wave like this. Eventually, it will become a saw wave. And any kind of wave can be created in here. We now we have a, a kind of a saw wave, but mm, I have to have the mathematical uh, calculation absolutely correct, and I can't do that by hand. Um, so luckily, we have presets. I'm just gonna pull these down, but um, that's what these knobs are for. You you can find alter. Say, you can uh, you can fine tune actually uh, the wave shape, but the nature of uh, sound waves is actually that you can create any any whatsoever uh, wave from a sinus wave. We're not going to use that. We're going to use one of these. And if you didn't see what I got, got it from, I got it from here is a sign. And it's not going to use sign. We're going to use something else. Um, nah. what have happened here? It's triggering. It's triggering. Triggering. Just a moment. Right. Um, I guess we should have had a bigger screen. Um, nah, it's okay. Uh, so over here we're going to change this from sign to something else. Like, for instance, saw. This is a simple saw. And you can immediately hear how the sound playing in the background. I have put some notes in uh, how it changed. So um, the other thing we're going to do is the parity of, of, of this, the base function parameter. Uh, it happens to be so that if you shave or, or shear a saw wave, it gets sharper. Right? Or if you unshear it, it also gets sharper. So here you can choose how sharp do I want my saw wave. I want it sharp? No, I don't 
I want it a little bit more like doll. That's the nature of uh, a, a, a wave. The, the, the more abrupt the inclination is, the sharper the, the sound will be. Okay, there's much more to this also. You can fine tune you can fine tune these things uh, too and, 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 and that's with all these knobs. And we're gonna do that today. Um let's say we wanted something like that. So that's an oscillator. Cool, let's close it. Let's go to the other oscillator. Uh, can I get that? Right in the bottom we have something called current voice. I can't... Uh, can I move this? I could move that. Brilliant. Uh, fine. Current voice. So we're going to choose voice 2. And also going to put voice 2 on. So now we have two oscillators running. And we're going to do the same thing again. Actually. What we could do now is say that this voice 2, or oscillator 2, is going to be an exact copy of the first oscillator we made. So we press the internal and choose X to it. And now we have two of the same. And then we could say that for, for, for the, the, whoops, the, the, the voice 2, or oscillator 2, we're going to put it one octave down. So now we have a spread of over an octave. And the actual thing we only need to do is put in oscillator 3 and put it on. Pull it up. I had to pull it up because you have to see the screen, right? And I can pull that up to an auto. So now we have three oscillators with this instrument. Three oscillators, one uh, octave low, uh, uh, what will we call it, uh, uh, a zero octave, uh, and, and one over octave. Um, right. Cool. And we can hear how the the, the, uh, the, the, the notes playing in the background uh, clearly have shifted. But we could also say that our, let's just say, uh, our oscillator tree change that and we're going to put it into a pulse. Sounds like that. Okay. Brilliant. So that's up to you to experiment here. What, are you, what do I want? And again you can change the... nature. Um, and, 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 and there's much more possibilities in sin that you have in, in strip oscillator, for instance. So. And I could have done that. So now we actually have an instrument. Um, the question is, is that exactly what we, 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 we wanted uh, in the first case? I don't know what you wanted in the first case. Uh, but that's exactly how you put in three oscillators or more. Because we have more. We have four, five, six, eight oscillators. So knock your socks off. Anyway, so this um, uh, panel here, um, we can change the amplitude envelope. Like, for instance, we want to um, push the attack. Listen. This is interesting. 
interesting because this is something called punch. Listen to how the, the, the sound changes if I increase the punch. You get that like plonk sound. So when you start right, that is where you have your plonk. So, what are we going to do more where we could change how uh, the extent of the node? Also going to do something to the filters. Um, put in a tag where you around a hundred. Ah, put that to about fifty and that down to about thirty. Yeah. So this is the, f the the resonance. Shouldn't deal too much around that. Um, yeah, and then we can go to our normal user interface and see that we now have these automation possibilities from that to that, and that was that the frequency if we. The frequency down, we have another span, another quality. Now, why didn't I get anything from that knob? Irritating, I want that. Yes, I can do that. Just have to go in here to the some unisons. Let's say 10 voices. And we go to here and we say 10 voices. And I go into here and I say 10 voices. Uh, and I, I have much more voices, but don't do it. It sounds horrible. Around 10 is okay. And we also have to have the span uh, in, in the LMS user interface. So we're actually going to get about 50 voices. Uh, or voices, voices. Uh, Frequencies span uh, spread spread yeah frequency spread. Um, gonna close that window. I'm gonna close that window, and now we suddenly have this knob active. So now you know that. So easy peasy. Never get intimidated by a user interface. Just experiment. That's I, I've just experimented. And ruin anything. Um, yep, that was it. Um, hope you enjoyed that short little tutorial and um, see you back soon. Bye bye.